Guys, this is Phil Galfon for BlueFirePoker.com, and today I'm going to be going over a session I played, or I guess the first part of a session I played, against David Benjamin at 501k no limit. I played this session very late at night, and I think my game suffered because of it. I was, I made a few mistakes, and I think it'll be good for me to go over them, and hopefully good for you guys too. I'll definitely point out when I think I played a hand badly, and explain why, and actually, uh, this first hand, this is about the fifth, fifth hand of the match, but first hand we started recording was, I think, the biggest mistake I made all match, maybe. Uh, I was kind of tempted to start recording one hand, or pretend I started recording one hand later, but this is a good punishment for myself. I decided to check-raise this board, which I think is fine some of the time. Obviously, you can't go overboard with it uh, against an observant opponent, but, you know, he's going to be c-betting all of his air pretty much, and stack sizes are such that I can very credibly rep any queen, because I'd be raising and stacking off with any queen on this flop, and at the same time, stack sizes are such that he can't 3-bet bluff me without shoving, so I don't think I'm getting 3-bet bluffed. When he calls, I think he has any queen, any 7 that he bet with, but I don't think he'd always bet a 7, especially weaker ones, and... He also has gutters, 5-6, five, 5-4, six, five, four, six, four. and then he has some ace-jack, ace-ten type hands. You know, given all that, I think that this shove is just terrible. Uh, I think that he's not calling my check raise on the flop and then folding a pair on the turn, basically. And 90% of his hands are a pair by the turn. Um, I guess I'll talk about why I made the play. First of all, I think that on that board... People are, in general, not going to be shoving turns. In general, not just on that board, but in general, people aren't going to be shoving turns with hands that aren't, you know, decent to strong made hands and good semi-bluffs. And there just aren't that many combinations of semi-bluffs on that board, given that it's so dry. So I think that skews my range towards, or anybody's range towards, um, strong made hands. That, I think, is a fine argument, but, you know, still not enough in itself to make the play. I think the justification that I use that is terrible is that I personally have a pretty strong range. You know, I know my game well, and I personally have a very strong range uh, when I shove that turn. And the problem with that is that even if David Benjamin's call is minus CV, or minus G-Bucks, if you will, against my range. Um, there's no way for him to know that. You know, as as observant a player as he is, and as many hands as we've played, there's just no way he knows my game as well as I know my game. And I, th I think that I personally level myself into a lot of poor plays just because of how good I think the play will be for my range, and, you know, how, if my opponent knows what I know, he has to fold every time, or has to call every time, um, given, you know, that I always play hands a certain way. And I think that I, I definitely give my opponents too much credit for knowing exactly how I play. Anyways, this hand I see bet, which I do pretty much against anyone. You know, I I think I get him to fold enough on this board to make it a profitable bluff, and also I get called by floats occasionally. And the other thing is I can't really check it down very often. People bet turns a lot, and I definitely can't call a turn, any turn, besides a deuce with this hand. Uh, when he bets the river, it's pretty interesting. I think that David check calls his flop very often or, you know, with a whole bunch of different kind of hands. Any queen, any ten, uh, any queen that he didn't check-raise. Any ten, any gutter or open-ender that he didn't check-raise, and then also ace-high hands. Pretty much any ace-high hand, I think. I'm not positive about that. Um, eight's a bad card, just because eight-nine and jack-eight got there, jack-nine got there. But, you know, given that he's bet the river now, we can take eight-nine and eight-jack out of his range. So right now I'm losing to any queen, jack-nine, any, you know, 
turned a river two pair, like 10 6, 6 4, 10 8. And any kind of slow played hand on the flop. I think that covers it. Hands that we beat King 9, King Jack, and Ace High, basically. Um, so, you know, a lot more hands that we lose to than beat, but I felt that he would check a lot of his 10s here. Given that, um, like, I think he could value bet an ace-10 type hand here, but I, David likes to bluff catch, and I thought he might view this river as a good card for me to bluff, and decide to turn ace-10, maybe even some weak queens into bluff catchers, and just check call. I also think that his weaker bet sizing skews his hand a little bit more towards bluff. Not very much, but a little bit. And certainly away from hands like Jack-9 and 2-pair, I think he would bet those bigger. I think he'd bet queens like this and maybe ace-10 if he decided to bet, or king-10. I also just think that he would turn hands like... If he has a hand like king-9 or ace-5, I think he would turn them into a bluff. Almost always, even though they have a bit of showdown value, just because this board is so conducive to bluffing. Just because I, I have to give him credit, or he should think I should have to give him credit for a hand. I'm also getting two and a half to one. I think it's a very close spot, and I did decide to call. Um, he had queen nine, which is certainly one of the hands that I could have expected to see, but I'm pretty fine with my call there. I don't have to be good all that often. Um, I raised it up with seven three of diamonds. And this is actually a pretty interesting hand. I see bet, and he calls, which, you know, he does with any straight draw, any flush draw, um, any 10, any any under pair, any ace high. Obviously, some of those hands will check raise. I think that he could check call with the king, but he'd more often check raise. When he leads the turn, it's a pretty weird line by him. David does check call lead turns a lot, but this is just a pretty strange board for it. When he check calls and then this turn hits, before he acts, I think he has a made hand almost always. Just because of just all the hand combinations besides flush draws and ace highs are now a pair or better. But when he bets, I think it takes a lot of those hands out of his range. I think that he's not betting a 10. He's not betting some jacks. I think he might not bet... I don't think he bet jack-9. He might bet queen-jack. Probably bet ace-jack. I think ace-queen re-raises preflop almost always. I think that queen-9 is possible. But I think that he's going to take a lot of his flush draws and, you know, 6-6 six, six or ace-5 type hands here and turn them into bluffs. And I kind of think it's very likely that that's what he's doing. Just because I don't think he has a king. he I think he check calls a king about one-fifth as often as he check raises it. Maybe even less. And I think that he might even decide to check raise his straights. So I think that when he's value betting, it's mostly ace-jack type hands. Um, so I have a couple options. I picked up a flush draw. I can call or I can raise, I think. I can obviously fold, but... I think that it's a good spot to continue with the hand. The problem with raising, and this is just something, this is something in general that I think people do wrong as far as concerning their range. When people see bet this board and then get led into, I think they bluff raise far, far too often. And I don't think it's necessarily a bad spot to bluff raise, but they're doing it maybe 10, 20% of the time that they have air. And when you raise this turn, there are so few hand combinations of legit made hands that you'd raise. I mean, I don't even know if you'd raise... Like, a lot of people wouldn't be raising aces for value, or maybe even like a hand like king-5 you might not raise for value. Some people might not raise queen-9 for value, because they're afraid of getting shoved on and then not know what to do. So, there are just not many hand combinations that are raising this turn for value, 
And if you're bluff raising 10 or 15% of the time, when you have, you know, 95% of your preflop range because you see bet the flop, which doesn't mean anything about your hand, you're just going to show up with bluffs. I mean, off the top of my head, total guess, six times as often as you have a main hand, maybe 10, I don't know. That might be overshooting it, but you can do hand combination calcs and figure that out. Uh, I think people need to just watch out for that in general. Anyways, I think that it's not a bad play in a vacuum, uh, but you don't want to overdo it. I decided to call here. The other thing I get to... The other benefit to calling is that I get more information. By floating the turn, I can see how he acts on the river before I decide to make a bluff. You know, if he does have a hand like ace queen queen nine king x he's gonna bet most rivers and i don't think he's gonna bet hands like jack nine on a lot of river maybe not even on a lot of rivers maybe not even ace jack so i get to see when he has a weaker hand and obviously i don't think uh i mean he could have oh that's the other thing you know when he has hearts i think he's gonna value bet this river so i learn a lot by seeing him check uh, obviously I'm going to bet now. You know, you don't always have to bluff when you float, but this is a perfect opportunity for it. Basically, I thought that he was weak a lot of the time, and I think that I very, very credibly can rep a hand. So I decided to bet very small, and my reasoning for that is, well, I think that he never has a big man hand, or almost never. He has, you know, ace-jack, queen-jack occasionally, but I actually don't think they're folding. I don't think that any bluff is profitable against ace-jack or queen-jack. That's not to say they're never folding, but if I made a large bet, I think he would call it too often to give me a good price on my bluff. Since he never has a 10, really what I'm trying to fold him off of are his hands like 6-6, six, six, ace-high, and, you know, I guess that's about it, to be honest. You know, under pairs and ace-high and, you know, some weird spaz play with a 10. So I think that all I need to bet to get him off of those hands is 13,000. And also, you know, I can very credibly rep a whole bunch of hands. I can rep any king. I can rep uh, queen 9, uh, ace jack. I also definitely am very capable, and he knows this, of betting very weak there with a very strong hand, hoping to induce a bluff. So he folds, which is a good result, and I'm pretty happy with the way that hand played out. Um, David and I have played a lot, but not a whole lot recently. Uh, he kind of took a hiatus from No Limit for a while before coming back. Um, I guess once this video is up, uh, he'll have been playing for a little longer, but when I recorded this, it was one of his first sessions back at No Limit, I guess Rail Heaven kind of brought him back, and, you know, his success kept him there. He ended up doing pretty well in the month or two following this recording. Anyways, he... We have reads on each other, but it's pretty much all not very useful, just because we've kind of changed our games. I know I've changed my game since we've played a lot of hands, and I, I believe he has too. I know he has too after playing this session, but at the beginning of the session, I believed he did. Um, I limp here. You know, I like to mix in some limps. He's been three-betting a little bit more, so I, I decided to start limping more. And I decided to two-barrel this board. I think that I should have bet less, you know, I'm essentially trying to take him off hands that are worse than mine, but have outs. Which is not something, you know, I always like to do. But the other thing about it, just because I think he has gutters a whole bunch of the time, and, you know, hands like queen-jack, king-jack, if he didn't raise them pre-flop. Actually, he'd raise those, but, like, jack-10. Uh, I think he floats with overs here a good bit. And, you know, you might say, why just bet to take him off hands that you beat anyways? But he's going to be betting the river with those hands, and I can't call, so... I basically want him to fold those hands before he can bluff me with them. I think that I could have bet smaller, just because if those are, I'm not trying to fold out a six, I'm not trying to fold out an ace high that turned a pair. So 
I'm I'm only trying to fold out hands like five seven, uh, seven four, etc. Jack ten, um, and I think I actually like to bet small here and then bet on the river again. Given that I bet a little bit big, I think that I can't really bluff the river just because his range is weighted towards stronger hands. And obviously, when I hit a queen, I check it down, hoping it's good. And it's not, but whatever. Um, uh, one thing I wanted to mention about limping against people who are through betting a lot, you don't really... I think the main reason for doing it, people don't realize. I think people think that you limp because you're trying to avoid getting three bet with those hands that you want to limp, which is, you know, one reason to do it. But you also, a lot of your limping range can't be calling a big raise, and a lot of people do raise kind of large against limps. So that's not the main reason. I think the main reason that it's good to limp against somebody who's three betting a lot is that it makes your open raising range a lot stronger, and most people don't adjust for it. So when you start limping half your opening hands, the weaker half for the most part, with a few good hands mixed in for balance, uh, when they three bet you, their three bets, their their weak three bets or loose three bets become a lot less profitable. Uh, they actually become bad plays a lot of the time, and I think people don't realize that, and they three bet far too much against people who limp. And you know, you you end up having you know premium hands or hands like Jack Ten suited that play really well in three bet pots. So, you can kind of get a lot of value from them overplaying their hands against your range. I think it's always good to be able to understand how to adjust your game and how it impacts the dynamic of the match, especially against people who just play like robots and don't adjust their game. Not that David's one of those people, but a lot of people do just play the same pretty much no matter what against everybody, and if you can change the dynamic of the match without them really realizing it, you can make them make a whole lot of mistakes. On a board like this, I think that he checks behind with a pair a lot, um, or ace high, but I think it's a pair too often by the turn for me to bet there to do anything but check fold. Dave and I have actually kind of similar style in that we are I guess less aggressive with our with our whole range in general. I think that both of us are more likely to check call the flop with you know our our floats with like gutters and with our uh, decent made hands whereas somebody like um, Patrick will be check raising his like all of his top pairs and all of his gutters or not all but a lot of and I don't think it's a I don't think it's a bad way to play I think it's just a different style and it it keeps it keeps your variance a bit lower just cuz pots are smaller and uh you know some people play worse in small pots than they do in big pots and I think playing the style that we play kind of capitalizes on that this hand I limped and he check called the flop. I think he does that with I think he mostly has a seven or some kind of straight draw or flush draw. Or maybe just two overs. When he bets the river, I think it's pretty interesting, but I think that he getting to the river this way will feel compelled to bet all his whatever. Jack nine type hands. Six five. So I think that I'm good enough at the time to call. It actually shows a six, which isn't not a bad play. Just because I, if I did have king high there, I would have picked it off. I wonder if I played the board, if I would have called. I probably wouldn't, just because of all the times. You know, if I'm right, we chop. If I'm wrong, I lose. So I'd have to be right. You know, much more often to make that profitable. So he's really only getting value from king high there. But that said, it's not that bad a play. So given that David is more likely to check call the flop than check raise, 
um, compared to some other players that I'm used to playing. I think that I... Or let me, I guess, talk about this hand first. I decided to check back the flop just because... Um, it's kind of weird, but given flow of match, I felt like he was looking to make a move. He's definitely calling every better hand, and I can also check this down and be good a good good amount of the time, which is what I do. Anyway, so against him, given his more passive style of play, I think that I can see bet the flop more relentlessly than I would against other players, which I didn't do there, but uh, in general, I think I can see bet a lot of kind of weak made hands, as well as, you know, gutters or basically anything, where against some players you want to check behind for pot control, or you want to check behind um, to not get blown off, you know, four nut outs with a gut shot. Um, when he leads on this board, I think he more often than not doesn't have a pair, but if he doesn't have a pair, he still has, I don't know, over 40% equity or something against my hand, and I'm going to have to fold every turn if he bets, so I think it's just better to fold the flop. I like to limp uh, if I am limping a lot against a player because he's 3-betting, I like to do it with small pairs just because the, they're a good hand to call with. They're a good hand to limp call with. And I like to... I don't like to have to limp fold every time I limp. Especially if they raise large. So here I flop a good hand. A great hand. And he check calls the flop and leads the turn. Now this is different than the other hand for a few reasons. First of all, he is actually... there are way less draws on this board. No straight draws at all. There's a flush draw. And then there's just, you know, a 9 or an ace. So basically he has... when he check calls, unless he's making, you know, the rare crazy float, he has an ace, a 9, a flush draw, or some kind of pocket pair. When he leads the turn, I actually think, given his sizing, what he's trying to do here is make me raise with um, with air or semi-bluff. But I actually think what he's mostly trying to get me to do is call with um, call with a hand with a diamond in it. So call with jack ten with a jack of diamonds, something like that. And I think he has a good ace here a lot of the time. I also think he wants me to call with a hand like ace-4, and he'll show up with a hand like ace-10 a lot. I don't think he has a flush that often, though it's very possible. And I think his plan is to bet the turn weak, and I'll talk myself into a cheap, cheap-ish float with uh, jack-10 with the jack of diamonds. And then I think he'll actually check call the river, uh, depending on what it is, of course. But I think on a blank river, he'll check call. So what I decided to do is call. You know, I could raise and get, and I, I don't think he's going to fold an ace all the time if I raise, but I do run into a flush occasionally, or a better nine occasionally. And I think the chance of that, um, given with how I expect to get paid off on the river, uh, makes it more of a call. Obviously, it's a great river for me. If he did have a flush, I beat it now. If he did have um, a better nine, we chop now. So he checks, and I want to make a bet that looks like I could have, you know, a turn float. I think that he would expect me to bluff. Uh, I think he expects me to bluff on this river more than I actually will, just because I think... He expects me to float more than I actually will on the turn. I think he may not have thought as hard as he should have in this spot to realize that he can't really show up with air to check call lead this turn. Um, which, you know, he certainly has in his mind that last time he check call led the turn, he had a weak hand or air. And I, and I picked it off. So I think that he's more likely to have a value hand here, even though it's not really a good board for it in my opinion. So I settle on 21.5, which I think is a good amount. I think betting closer to pot, just given our history, uh, is not a good play for me. And I think that betting smaller, I think this gets called just about as often as a smaller bet. 
and he does call, which is a great result. And he actually had ace eight, which is <clears throat> it was a bit surprising to me. I thought that he would have a stronger ace, but not all that surprising. I did expect to see an ace a lot of the time. Obviously, on that river, he could add a flush, which is another reason I decided to bet a little bit bigger. I think that a flush is more likely. I wanted to. I wanted, in his mind, I wanted to be able to have uh, ace king, ace queen type hand going for a thin value, so he would always call with his flushes. Here, when he leads into me, I think he has a lot of top pair type hands, mid pair type hands, and then a lot of gutters or flush draws. Occasionally, some overs. I hovered over fold, which I don't think you can fold this board, so. I shouldn't have hovered over fold. Maybe I was trying to level you guys into uh, thinking that you can make me fold. Ace high, got shot on the flop with the lead. Uh, turns an ace, which is a good card. It is a diamond. But actually, given his tendencies and his bet size here, I think that he actually has a good eight a lot of the time. I think he has a hand like queen eight. That's... Um, going to bet and then make a decision on the river. He's kind of, It's kind of a protection bet. He also expects me to call with, you know, any decent diamond and any deuce or any four. So he's he's value betting it. When he checks the river... Sorry, when the river hits a three, I'm actually pretty disappointed because I was expecting the river to... I, I was hoping the river would be like an offsuit queen. Obviously not if he had queen eight, but an offsuit queen, and then he would check call with his eight because of all the draws that I could double float with, especially hands like... You know, 7-5 with 7 of diamonds. Uh, just things like that. Or maybe a 4 that I decide to turn into a bluff. But when the 3 hits, I don't think I can get paid off by much at all. And so, I make a small bet, hoping to have him make a crying call with an 8. Um, or maybe an ace that he turned. But no luck. So I've, I guess, fought back to get him to the stack he started with after I gave it all to him in one hand. The pace of the match has been fairly slow. I guess we've played a few big hands. But I think in general, uh, when David and I play heads up, it's a pretty slow paced match given the way both of us play. I think we're both more comfortable in smaller pots. Um, <clears throat> and I think we both actually play pretty well in them. I think David's has a, a worse reputation than he deserves as far as his No Limit game. He's certainly got a couple leaks, but he's a very smart guy. He's a good hand reader, and I think he adjusts well to different opponents, actually. This match, compared to previous matches I played with him, he's definitely gotten a lot more aggressive. He's 3-bet. You know, I actually didn't get to see a lot of his hands when he 3-bet, but he's 3-bet but he's 3-betting much more frequently. And he's also raising limps a lot more often than he used to. But, you know, it's not surprising that he's changed his game a little bit, and it's just another thing I have to adjust to. Uh, so I limp 8-7. This is a good board to see bet But I don't... I actually... Well, I mean, certainly you can go second level there and say, well... This is a good board to see bet when I check behind. He knows I have a made hand, but in general, I think that was a little FPS-y me. I think I should have just see bet that board. The other thing about limp pots is that people don't really have a lot of interest in them. I think you can pick up a lot of limp pots just because, especially when people are in the big blind, they feel they have nothing invested, and they're just quick to give up. So on a board like that where not many hands hit a pair or a draw, you can just bet and take it down. I 3 by there with 3-5 suited. Um, I don't know, not much to say about it. I do that occasionally, and I hadn't been 3-betting much. I limped with King Jack. I really like to limp. I like to mix uh, some high cards in like that when I'm when I'm limping a lot against an opponent, just because it's a good hand that I can limp call, and also it's great for uh, flopping top pair on boards where they're going to barrel you, because they think you have... They think you have hands like 8-7, and they know that they're repping hands like high cards, so they're going to bluff a lot. Uh, I decided to check back 9-7 here. I think it's actually a good board for it. 
uh, for a couple reasons. First of all, I think he's going to call the flop with ace high because it's ace high and a gutter. I also think any pair he's going to call the flop with, as well as hearts. And so I think that a lot of his uh, big blind calling range um, is going to be calling the flop. I think he calls the flop too often to make a profitable c-bet. The other thing is that I think I very credibly rep a hand when I check behind. Just be, you know, a hand like king five going for pot control, um, queen x, ace ten, what have you. And I also get some information about his hand. When he checks the turn, a lot of people in this spot aren't going to check the turn to check call, especially once the jack rolls off. There's just not a lot of draws that he could have, or like, there's not really any pair plus draws except for pair plus flush draw. But any hand like, sorry, I guess on the flop there are a lot of pair plus draws. What I mean is on the flop there are a lot of pair plus draws that are no longer pair plus draws on the turn, there are two pair or made draws that he's going to be betting into me with. So when he checks, I think that he's actually going to be folding a lot of his tens and jacks there, unless they have like a decent heart with them. Or a uh, or two pair, which he would bet. So I think getting the extra information and making a profitable delayed c-bet there is better than c-betting, is what I was trying to say and struggling with, apparently. Ace-x is a hand that, when I'm limping, I actually like to limp a good amount of the time. I like to raise it some of the time. Basically, I just mix it up for balance. Alright, so here we finally pick up a good hand. Uh, I guess we've picked up a couple, but... Tens is really pretty, so I decided to three bet. Um, I would always three bet this, especially with stacks. He shoves; it's an easy call, and it's just a cooler. I mean, nothing either of us can do there. And after we fought back for the that 50k, he just took it back in one hand, once again. So back to the grind, I guess. At this time, I was playing only one table, which I think is actually bad for my game. I can focus a lot more on the table, but I also think I get a little over fps -y. I try to fight for too many pots, and I, you know, have more time to think, but I also kind of outthink myself a lot of the time. I think that's one of my biggest leaks, is that I outthink myself. Uh, I certainly think it makes me a little bit harder to read, but at the same time, I think I make a lot of mistakes because of it. So he leads, and I call with jack-8, um, standard. Turns a 7, and this is actually pretty interesting. I think the standard plays to check. But I think that David has a lot of 7s in his range, as well as 6s. I think he leads sometimes with a 6, and I think he leads with, you know, hands like a7, king7, Jack 7, any 7, basically. So what I'm trying to do here is get value from a 6 or a 7. He'll also occasionally check call with a hand like Queen Jack here, uh, rather than bet it again. He'd probably more often bet it, but he could check call with it. Anyway, so I'm trying to get him to call with some of those hands, or maybe a uh, worse 8, like 8-5, eight, 8-4 eight, suited if he happened to play that. Uh, the other thing is that if if I am beat, I have a good amount of equity. You know, against a hand like ace-10, I have eights, nines, and jacks. And also, he does have hands like, you know, king-5, or sorry, king-4, let's say that he decided to lead, and now he's going to check fold, and, you know, why give him three free outs? This is actually another interesting decision. When I get called, I think he does have a lot of sevens, and... Uh, occasionally a 6, but I think a lot of the time he has a better 8 than me, or maybe a 6, 7, or 10, um, or some kind of pair with a flush draw. This river is actually a pretty good river to bluff, just because everything hit. Every conceivable hand that I peeled the flop with that isn't a total float now is made hand. And I think a bluff would actually be a good play. I think it's actually a very good play 
game theory wise just because this is one of the weakest hands that I get to the river with this way and I should be able to have some bluffs on this river and so using one of the weakest hands I can have on this river as a bluff is just good for my range but in a vacuum uh, I think it's slightly less good just because of all the times that I'll have the best hand anyways and all the times that he'll talk himself into a call with a 10 or maybe even an 8 if he just doesn't believe me, you know, thinks I floated the flop with just King Jack or Ace-4 and then decided to play it this way. So I think this is actually a close decision and I decided to check hoping that I was good against 6 or 7 but you know I actually do want to mention that that's not a good justification for checking behind. You know, all the time that all the times that he does have a six or seven, if I bet he's folding those anyway. So being good against those hands isn't a great reason to check and quote unquote hope I'm good. But uh, my reasoning was that I felt he had kind of a strong range there too. After he called my turn bet, I thought that he had top pair a lot uh, or strong eight or maybe a six seven type hand. And occasionally, I think he'd show up with a flush there. So, um, all in all, I think that it's a very close decision. And I'm fine with checking, I'm fine with betting. I think that I'd prefer bet a little bit, uh, just as part of an overall strategy. I think it's good for balance and good for metagame. But, I'm fine with the way that played out. So here I... Made a standard C bet after a raise, and I turned an open ender. And this is a weird spot because I don't expect him to fold the turn all that often. A lot of his pairs are now pair plus gut shot type hands. S um, sorry, not a, not necessarily a lot of them, but he either has an ace, so any ace that I think he's going to call the turn with, and then some of his kings are you know, king-jack, king-queen, that he's certainly not going to fold with. He might also just call with, you know, king-six suited. And then also, he's going to be check-calling his flop with queen-jack, uh, queen-ten, ten-jack, that now have a pair and a gutter. So I felt that I couldn't get him off many hands besides a seven here, uh, except with two barrels. And I felt that I wouldn't get enough information to know that two barreling's profitable. Like, when he check-calls a turn, I think that he's going to call on a lot of rivers. So I did decide to check and hope to hit uh, one of my outs. I don't, but now I think that, given that I checked the turn, uh, I think that my hand... I don't know, I think he would give me a bit of credit here for a bluff. But I, I did decide to check, just because I felt that he very often would have a two-pair hand that he'd check to induce, and also that he would have, let me pause it for a second, also that he would have a jack there a good amount of the time. I also don't think, I think that it, one of David's leaks is that he overvalues top pair a little bit too much in spots like that where top pair is the same as middle pair. So I felt he would call with a lot of his aces. The other thing is, uh, the thing that I was talking about in the 7-3 diamonds hand, where I decided not to raise the turn because of how often I'd show up with how often I think most people show up with air in that spot and it'd be the same in this spot where all I did was see bet the flop and check behind the turn uh, I have a, a whole big portion of my range there and I'm always very range conscious as most of you know so I felt that if I bet that river I, I felt that I can't bet that river with too much of my air otherwise my range is overwhelmingly going to be airy. So, for all those reasons, I decided to check. Again, I think a bet's fine occasionally. I check called this flop just because he see bet half pot, which is what I think he would do with a lot of his... He would do it with an ace, but then a lot of his other hands, and I, I think that when I check called this board, he's not going to be barreling me. King-queen actually makes a lot of sense once I see it. I think a lot of people bet small there when they think, well really no worse hand, uh, sorry, yeah, no worse hand's going to call me, but I might as well bet, but I'll just bet small anyways, since if he ca calls, I'm likely no good, but if he folds, I was good anyways. I decided to bet jacks here, I think it's actually kind of standard with my gutter to go along with my uh, 
second-ish pair. Better than second pair, I guess. Here's another, I don't know, standardish board to see bet. I guess nothing really to talk about. I was actually looking to 3-bet that Jack-7 suited hand. I haven't 3-bet uh, in a while, and the only hand that he has seen me 3-bet was 10s, uh, I believe. I'm getting 3-bet a whole bunch, and I'm actually considering making some 4-bet bluffs. In the past, David wasn't a good person to 4-bet bluff, so that's why I really haven't been doing it yet, but because he wasn't 3-betting very light, and because he would call or he would call or stack off pretty light once he'd three bet but given that he's been three betting more i think